thank you and good morning. morning. Would you expect me to come out in shoulder pads and helmets after that introduction? <laughs> well, thanks so much for that introduction. Before I get started, though, um, you know, when, whenever I hear my, um, you know, my story, I always think back to my parents and I always get emotional. You know, they both have passed and gone on. But, um, but most people don't know, you know, we had a great introduction and started this program by our executive director, Clarence Anthony. And many people don't know, growing up, uh, Mr. Anthony was actually my mayor growing up. So you never know, elected officials, you never know who you're inspiring in your places, you know, and I would never have thought, you know, 20, 30 years later that I would be in this position. So I just wanted to share that all with you. But um, I'm so happy to be here this morning to talk about um, what's going on in the city of Myanmar. You know, we have many individual um, uh, initiatives we have going on, but I, I decided to take more of a macro perspective in terms of the challenges for the city of Myanmar. Um, a little bit about the city of Myanmar. We are about 30 minutes a little northeast of here in, in southwest Broward County, which is the county north of Miami-Dade County. Um, our city is a, was started as a bedroom community between Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And it has grown over the years, as you can see in, in, this, in this chart. Um, our population since 2000 has almost doubled. Um, Miramar, just before the economic downturn, was one of the fastest growing cities in the nation. Uh, from a demographic perspective, um, right now the city of Miramar, we're right around 100, and I know the graph says 132, but as of the last census check, we're about 134,000 residents. We're the 13th largest city in Florida, um, the fourth largest city in Broward. We'll probably be the third largest soon, and we still have a little bit more potential to grow on. But this, and the challenge in the city of Miramar was just before the economic downturn, our city was growing so fast and so rapidly then, as we all experienced, the economy kind of sank from under us. But unlike most cities, the city of Miramar continued to grow. While other cities was losing residents, losing businesses, our city continued to have more residents move into the community. Um, businesses were still coming into the community, so our operational costs continued to grow, but the property values were decreasing. Our revenue base was decreasing, but we had this increased pressure in terms of being able to keep up with the quality of life that is expected of our residents and our business community. And being, uh, so how did all this happen? Why did the city still remain fresh and attractive? Well, we're equidistant from both cities. We're 30 minutes from Miami, 30 minutes from Fort Lauderdale, equidistant from both international airports. Our city has a foreign trade zone. From a logistical standpoint, um, we have the Florida Turnpike and I-75 major um, interstate um, um, the thoroughfares coming straight through our city. We have a very healthy industrial park. So, Miramar is like that perfect storm that was waiting to happen, and it took place. So when coming on the commission first before um, being elected mayor, um, the city was at a standstill. You know, we had residents, had now, had increasingly become younger. The average age in Miramar is about 34 years old, which means a lot of young families, active families, but nothing really to do in the city. You have to come over to these beautiful beaches in my Fort Lauderdale, Miami Beach, Hollywood, which is great, but our young residents want to have things to do in our community. So that was the challenge. And in addition to that, we had to continue to attract businesses. So we wanted to make sure that we focused on economic development. So what were some of the things that we did to, to continue to address the issues of the property tax decline, the city population continuing to grow? Um, one of the things we did was to, as a stopgap, I, I, I introduced the idea of doing a revenue bond that would address many of the deferred maintenance issues we had in our community. Our parks, um, which used to be new, were no longer new as the city was growing. Um, our new city hall, our new community facilities were no longer as new as they were back in 2000, in the early 2000s when we were building them, when we built them. So, but we did not have the extra revenue to be able to take care of all of these issues. So the revenue bond basically served as a crutch for us to improve parks citywide. We actually um, 
currently going through the process of implementing um, several infrastructure projects to, um, to address um, um, engineering issues in our historic side of town. And just as importantly, our police headquarters. We had to abandon our police headquarters because it was damaged in 2005 from hur Hurricane Wilma. So we'd been leasing commercial space for our police headquarters, so we did not have a home for it. So the revenue bond helped fund our police headquarters, and we'll be moving into that headquarters in about a couple of months, and it's nearing completion. So what we did was, in terms of, of, of continuing to attract, we knew if we showed the public that the city of Miramar had confidence in itself to weather this storm, that the business community would continue to come, that residents would want to continue to move into our community. And it was a gamble, and that gamble paid off. In fact, everyone saw what we were doing. We worked with our community partners in terms of um, Enterprise Florida, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance, which is the economic development organization in, the, in Broward County that helps recruit businesses internationally into um, Broward County. And Miramar is probably by far the most active city that is recruiting businesses into our city. And I'll share some of the um, success stories. So for example, we would, on top of the state of Florida and on top of um, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance in terms of jobs incentives and jobs creation and placement, the city of Miramar also put in dollars to recruit and attract businesses to come to our city for jobs that they would create. Um, many businesses were investing significant dollars in tenant improvements as well as um, construction dollars and building their new facilities. We created an easy pathway for them through expedited permitting. We know that time is money in terms of development. You cannot sit on on, on developers' permits in your building department. You cannot allow your staff to not be, uh, to bend over backwards for opportunities to bring economic development into your community. And we also pushed our foreign trade zone. Um, as you know, South Florida is the gateway to South America and Latin America. And with us, as I stated earlier, Miramar being strategically and centrally located, businesses, manufacturers are, have their options to utilize Port Everglades in Fort Lauderdale or in my Port of Miami or use either international airport. So a foreign trade zone outside of Port Everglades just made perfect sense. So our Park of Commerce has a western foreign trade zone where manufacturers have the ability to manufacture components or are part of their devices and send them out um, tariff-free, and that has been very successful. But we didn't also want to forget about our small businesses, because these are the families that are moving into our communities. These are the small business owners that want to come to a nice suburban community, have all the accesses to all the amenities of South Florida, so they're moving into Miramar but they want their some businesses in the city as well, near their homes. Or some of them were even um, 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 doing business right out of their homes with um, taking advantage of technology. Now, one of the statistics that we are so proud of in the city of Miramar are our corporate residents. Um, we love to tout that Miramar has more Fortune 500 companies in our city than any city in South Florida, including from Palm Beach County down to Miami-Dade County, whether it's their headquarters or their regional headquarters or some significant presence in our city. And that helped fuel the growth. And many of these companies are companies that have taken advantage of jobs incentives and active recruitment with our state partners and our county partners to have them locate into a city like Miramar um, to stay. And I'd like to share a few um, statistics. Miramar was one of the hardest hit communities in the economic downturn in terms of foreclosures. Many of our residents lost their homes. But fortunately, because of the activity that we, performed, that we took place and implemented in our community, that we were able to get those homes resold, the vacancy rates continued to go down. Property values increased. Just last year, we had over an 8% increase when before 
property values were declining, and we had the tremendous challenge of keeping up with operational demands and quality of life challenges in terms of pre being able to provide the civic services that our city um, um, needs to provide for our community. We have a AAA bond rating. Currently, right now, we have over 1,800 planned residential units under construction, so we're continuing to grow, valued almost to the, to the amount of $200 million. We have $17 million of corporate investment going on right now. So we not only have been able to sustain ourselves, but our outlook is even brighter because of the incentives and the calculated so, uh, risk that we took in ourselves. Because as communities, as each of you are faced with your challenges, if you sit around and wait for the opportunity to come, it never shows up. You have to be proactive. You have to be in tune to what investors are looking for and what the community and what potential um, corporate residents and, and, and resident uh, and um, uh, potential um, investors to look into your community. One quick story I'd like to show, um, JL Audio on the top. That is an audio company that was founded in our city and they had a separate manufacturing operation in China. And this company, they do high-end speakers for yachts, airplanes, a very niche market, but very successful. When they were growing and decided to grow, they had an opportunity to go anywhere in the world. In fact, we always hear about jobs going overseas, jobs going over to China. They had an opportunity to expand in China, but guess what they did? They knew what was going on in Myanmar. They knew the investment that we were making in ourselves. And right now, they are opening up a new assembly line in our city. So when people are saying that we're losing jobs to China, well, in Myanmar, we're taking jobs away from China. So I just wanted to share that. So I look forward to the, dis uh, to the, to the discussion later. And I just wanted to give you all a little taste of how we're addressing our challenges in the city of Myanmar. Thank you.